All right, let's jump right in. Today we are cutting through all the noise to build your essential guide to the language of artificial intelligence. Think of this as your personal AI translator. So if you've been paying any attention to tech lately, you've probably seen terms like these flying around everywhere. LLM, RAG, hallucination. Honestly, it can feel like you're trying to learn a whole new language overnight. But hey, don't worry, you are absolutely not alone and you're in exactly the right place. In the next few minutes, we're gonna take all that confusing jargon and turn it into simple, powerful ideas that you can actually understand and use. Okay, let's dive into this. First things first, we need a map, a way to see the big picture. So we're gonna start with the AI family tree to see how all these huge concepts fit together. Right at the very top, the great grandparent of it all is artificial intelligence itself. Just think of AI as the giant umbrella that covers the entire field. It's the ultimate goal, right? To create machines that can do things that normally require human smarts. So how in the world do we actually do that? Well, one of the most powerful ways is machine learning. Instead of a programmer sitting down and writing rules for every single possibility, we just, we feed the system tons and tons of data and let it figure out the patterns for itself. This is how an AI gets experience, just like we do. And then, Inside machine learning, there's this supercharged technique called deep learning. This is the real heavy lifter. It uses these complex structures called neural networks, and we'll get to those in a second, to find incredibly subtle patterns in just massive amounts of data. This is the engine behind the stuff that feels like magic, you know, recognizing your face in a photo or translating languages in real time. And here's how that all connects visually. Think of AI as the entire universe. Inside that universe is the galaxy of machine learning, and inside that galaxy is the powerful star system of deep learning, making all this incredible stuff happen. See? Each one is just a more specialized part of the one before it. So that's the family tree. Now let's pop the hood and take a look at the actual architecture, the components that are powering modern AI. What is it that actually makes deep learning? Well, deep. It all starts with the neural network. And this is literally inspired by our own brains. Just like our brains have neurons that connect and fire to help us learn, an AI's network has these digital neurons connected in layers. As data passes through, each layer gets a little bit smarter, recognizing more complex features. That's how it can learn the difference between, say, a picture of a cat and a picture of a dog. And just to put that complexity into perspective for you, get this. At the famous workshop back in 1956 where the term AI was first invented, the pioneers literally thought they could build a model of the human brain as a summer project. Yeah, turns out it's just a little more complicated than that. Now for decades, one of the biggest challenges for AI was understanding long, complicated sentences. The real game changer was something called the transformer architecture. Its superpower is this thing called a self-attention mechanism. It basically lets the model weigh the importance of different words in a sentence to get the full context. This is precisely why a modern AI can understand a complex question or even get a joke. I mean, the leap here is just huge. It's night and day. We went from these rigid, brittle AIs that were so easy to confuse to models that actually feel conversational and intuitive. The transformer is the engine behind pretty much every advanced language AI you use today. Okay, so we have the brain, the architecture, but how does it actually learn? Let's take a look at the different teaching methods that we use to train an AI model and make it smarter. So an AI can learn in three main ways. In supervised learning, we give it data that's already labeled with the right answers. It's like studying with a textbook and an answer key. With unsupervised learning, we just give it a pile of data and it has to find the hidden patterns on its own, kind of like an explorer. And then there's reinforcement learning, where it learns through trial and error, getting rewards for good moves, just like a player learning to master a game. All right, let's get really practical now. This next set of terms is what you're going to run into when you actually use these AI tools. And trust me, understanding these is the key to getting great results. First up, prompt engineering. And this is probably the single most important skill for using AI effectively right now. It's the art and science of writing clear, specific instructions, your prompts to get exactly what you want out of the AI. You know, a good prompt is like asking a really precise question. A bad one is just kind of mumbling and hoping for the best. You have definitely heard this one, LLM. It stands for Large Language Model. This is the specific type of AI we've mostly been talking about. It's been trained on a truly massive chunk of the internet to become an expert in understanding and generating human language. All the big names you know, ChatGPT, Gemini, they're all LLMs. But how do we make these LLMs more factual, more up-to-date? Well, that's where RAG comes in. 
It stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Basically, before the AI answers your question, the RAG system retrieves fresh info from a reliable source to augment its response. It's kind of like giving the AI an open book test. It makes the answers so much better. Next up is the context window. This is, for all intents and purposes, the AI's short-term memory. It's the amount of information it can hold in its mind at one time. If your conversation gets too long and goes past that window, the AI literally starts to forget what you were talking about at the beginning. All right, for our final section, let's talk about the nuances. Because AI is brilliant, it really is, but it's not perfect, and understanding its quirks and how to control them is absolutely essential. This question comes up all the time. When an AI gives you wrong information, is it actually lying to you? Well, the short answer is no, not really. The technical term for this is a hallucination. This happens when the AI generates an answer that sounds super confident and plausible, but it's just factually wrong or completely made up. Now, it's not trying to deceive you. It's a system flaw, a glitch in how it predicts the next word. And this is exactly why you should always, always fact check important information you get from an AI. But here's the good news. You have some control over this stuff. Many AI models have a temperature setting, which is basically a creativity dial. If you turn the temperature down low, you get more focused, factual, predictable answers. You turn the temperature up high, and you're encouraging more creative, diverse, and sometimes really unexpected results. It's a fun one to play with. And just like that, there you have it. From the big picture of the AI family tree, all the way down to the practical controls you can use today. We now have the vocabulary to not just use AI, but to actually understand it. Which, of course, leaves us with the most important question of all. 